Rahman Rahim. So something that uh, there's a statement from Imam Ali ibn Hussein, who was named Zainul Abidin, radiallahu anhu. Uh, so he is the um, the great grandson of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he said, <clears throat> "Inna Allah khaba'a thalathan fi thalath." Allah subhanahu wa taala has hidden three things in three things. Khaba'a ridahu fi ta'atihi that he uh, hid or concealed um, his uh, pleasure in acts of uh, obedience, in acts of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa taala. So never downplay any act of obedience, whether it's small or large. You know, he doesn't say, mm, he doesn't distinguish between what we would consider to be sort of major acts of obedience and minor acts. So to have scrupulousness in the religion is very important. You never know if the rida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is behind that act of obedience. And he's hidden his or concealed his wrath in acts of disobedience. So never consider any act of disobedience as being um, just something irrelevant or unimportant. Because you never know behind which act of disobedience is the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's concealed his sainthood. Uh, his friendship amongst his creation, right? Amongst his creation. So we've seen people that are very hostile towards Islam mm, come into the faith. And this is very important that we make dua for people. One of my teachers said, half of da'wah is dua, right? So pray for people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is muqallib al qulub He's the changer of hearts. We don't know how someone's end is going to be. We don't know our end. We pray for husn al-khatimah. You know, when you read the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see amazing things. There were sahaba who, just from listening to the Qur'an, uh, had iman enter into their hearts. You know, there was an incident at the college Whereas Yasin was here, is he still here? Yasin was reciting in the Musalla, <laughs> and there's this late non Muslim, because people take walks, you know, down that road. And he was reciting, and she heard this qira'a, non Muslim old lady. And she was looking and, what is that? This is amazing. This is beautiful. Just listening to the qira'a of the Quran, it's kalam Allah, it speaks to the heart. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, for example, who was on his way, right? And he had resolved upon the most evil intention in the history of humanity. He was going to kill the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then when he gets to the house, he hears the Qur'an. Taha ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an li tashqa. Ajeeb. We did not reveal this Qur'an in order for you to be miserable. He had iman enter into his heart. So some people just hearing the Qur'an. I had a roommate in college. He was a Catholic guy. I was a third year junior. He was a freshman. And it just so happens that, so I was in the uh, transfer dorms. And then there was a weird smell that was coming from our room. And no one could figure out what it was. It was a big mystery. So they moved me into a freshman dorm as a junior. So I had this freshman guy a couple years younger than me. And I walked into the room and there's this huge crucifix on the wall. It looked like a life-size crucifix. It was huge. I'm thinking, I gotta, I gotta pray in here. Oh, okay, so I had this little you know, thing. and um, Mashallah, we started talking and so I said, let's go out to dinner. So we get in the car and I just, I just turned on the Quran. You know, just turned it on. And you could see his face looking over at him. He was just going like this. So the whole, I forgot where we went, with some sandwich place or something. It might have been Taco Bell. This was the late 90s. <laughs> we were young men. So then uh, we go to class, I come home the next day, and he's made, he, I catch him in sajda on my prayer rug. 
You know. And then he said, I didn't go to classes today. Said, well, you're gonna get <laughs> you're gonna get you're gonna get dismissed from the college. <laughs> First day of class he didn't go. So you never know what's gonna affect the heart. You know. Some of the Sahaba they were converted through miracles. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran, Ya ayyuhan nabiyu inna arsabnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira wa da'iyan ila Allah wa sirajan munira. Wa sirajan munira. He is a lamp that spreads light. You know, so one time the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was walking with Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu and they came to uh, a shepherd who was tending the flock uh, and they said to him, give us a drink from one of the goats. And he said, this is, this is not my flock. I'm guarding it for this, Abu Jahl, right? Uh, so this is an amana. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he said, well, bring me a goat that's never given birth. Well, what, what is that going to do? Okay, we bring him a goat. And he said, this is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, the shepherd. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he just touches the udder. He says, it fills up with milk. He says, bring me a vessel. He pour it into the vessel, and they both drink it. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu annaka rasulullah. So this is from a miracle. In the Tabaqat of Ibn Sa'ad, he mentions that there was a man named Khalid ibn Sa'id. And this is before the call of the Prophet ﷺ went public. And so uh, this man Khalid, he had a dream, and he knew Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu used to interpret dreams even before Islam. So he had this dream and he went to Abu Bakr Siddiq and he said, I had this dream. Said, what was your dream? He said, dream. And, and, and uh, so I'm standing at the edge of this lake of fire and uh, my father is in it and he's trying to grab me and I keep fighting him off. And eventually he grabs me and he's about to yank me into the fire. And then your friend comes up from behind me and he grabs me around my waist like this. And he pulls me back and saves me from the fire. Your friend Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiqui said, be of good cheer, he's the messenger of God. And this is how he converted. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is in control of the hearts. You might think someone is just incorrigible. Allah will change the hearts. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came into Medina, Medina to Munawwara, there were munafiqeen in the city, right? And uh, they paid a poet, Hassan ibn Thabit. And when the poets wrote something about you, you know, when they lampoon you, when they insult you, this could stay forever, for generations. That's the power of the poet, right? So they gave this man, Hassan ibn Thabit, some money. And they said, when you see the Prophet sallallahu Although they did not say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But I'll say it. When you see him, write something, lampoon him. Right? I said, okay, so I give him some money. And then he's waiting by one of the roadways. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passes by. And he takes a single glance. And he goes back to these Munafiqun and he says, here's your money, I don't want it. So I said, did you write something? He said, yeah, I wrote something. So he said, let's hear it. He said, Lamma ra'aytu anwarahu sata'at wata'atu min khifati kaffi ala basari khawfan ala basari min husni suratihi falastu anthuruhu ila ala qadri ruhum minan nuri fi jismin minal qamari kihiliyatin nusijat minan anjum al-zuhri Subhanallah. He says, when I saw his lights approaching I had to cover my face with my palm out of fear of losing my eyesight because of the, the, the beauty of his countenance. I could scarcely look at him. A soul from light and a body carved from the moon like a, like a cloak patched together with brilliant stars. Hassad ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu, he became the poet laureate of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So make dua for people, you know. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala muqaddib al-qulub, 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill the hearts of the world with the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He is Habibullah. He has the highest station any human being in history. This is his title, Habibullah. Of course, Allah loves all the Prophets. Every Prophet is Khalilullah. But there's something, there's a, there's a special quality, a special emphasis with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So he is Habibullah par excellence. Right? And if we love Allah's Habib, then we'll gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise our stations. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, increase us in knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to convey this, this lamp that spreads light to the rest of the world.